Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today I have a shock in store because we're going to be taking a look at an XFX R9290 double dissipation graphics card. Now we've not done an XFX product for an awfully long time. Uh, so I actually asked them if I could have one of these. I went and groveled. I was like, I'd really like to take a look. And uh, I think you want to stay tuned because I think you might be glad I did. But before I go into all the mumbo jumbo about the specs and all that type of stuff, let's take a look at it nice up close because this is one pretty bit of hardware. Right, peeps, before I pick it up, one thing I do have to say is this is one pretty looking card. It's uh, got a stock clock of 940 megahertz on the core and then memory is 5,000 megahertz and then the rest of it's all standard 290 stuff, four gigabyte of memory, blah de blah de blah de blah. So right, let's have a gander. In fact, I'm gonna come around this way. I'm gonna hug the tripod a little bit better than normal. So uh, I did say on the rush kit video that this might light up. And as I will show you in a bit, it does. And to quite some dramatic effect as well. Uh, it is always a shame that it's gonna be on the bottom of the card. If you really wanted to show it up, uh, you'd end up having to get one of those um, uh, ITX boards, whether you've got a case on the side, a uh, case window on the side or something, or even a uh, PCI Express riser so you can have it mounted differently in your case, because a lot of cases have got PCI plates in the side and stuff, but it gets awfully complicated when you do that, if you just want to chuck it in and it work. Um, no matter what though, I did manage to get some awesome pictures of it in our rig. Uh, something I really, really like about this is the subtle detailing with the chrome around the edges here and the way it just kind of starts to expose into the fins and stuff. It's very simple things like, you know, that this distance and this distance of the black are kind of matched and it's all kind of, it's all just very, very pleasing. I know around this side it gets a bit thicker and I actually don't like this little bit. But anyway, when you see the way, it, I just, I do really like it. I can't express how pleasing it is. The only thing I don't personally like is the fact that we've got so much chromey bits all around here, around the outside of the fans. I mean, there's lots of little chromey bits and then you have the copper heat pipes. I think if they'd have been nickel plated, it could have finished it off just that much better. Again, personal preference, but I, you know. I do also like the fact that this is quite satin and then the XFX is gloss. So it does help to catch the light that little bit better as well. Um, Power is a eight pin and a six pin normal. It is a shame we've not got a back plate because I think because of the way that this is all so smooth and nice, and you know, it, this is all kind of quite um, understated. If they'd have stuck a back plate on it and just made it just plain black, it could have made it, you know, that little extra bit special. Uh, and I personally would have loved it that little bit more as well. Now, just because it looks the nuts, which it does, doesn't necessarily always mean that it performs the nuts as well. So it's now time for us to get this in the rig and give it a bit of a paste in. Okay then, so yes, we are at quite an acute angle to look at the case and I know we can see down the back more, but it's because I've kind of got you in line with the, uh, the graphics card itself before I turn the rig on. And uh, if I was to uh, press the button, It is going to uh, turn itself on and off a few times. There we go. It's quite handy actually, because it means like where we're down so low, I can uh, undo the door and it'll miss the top of the case. Wedge that up there. Now, when we are, uh, <laughs> I love the look of this thing. I really can't tell you enough how good I think that looks. That's amazing. And believe it or not, most of the noise in this case is the, the rest of the fans. Because the uh, I have all of the other fans in the case at 100%. Uh, just because it gives us a, a static kind of temperature for the rest of the like for the graphics card and stuff. People can't say that it's not getting enough air and no, 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 no. So anyway. Um, uh, yes, we need to just move on. This thing in the case looks the absolute gonads. 
I know I've got a lot of lights and stuff in this because of the way I've specifically built the rig for reviews but oh that certainly does look the part anyway let's um <laughs> Uh, move on. Anyway, uh, test rig as always, 4960X, uh, 16 gigabytes, of course, they're Dominator Platinum, H105 in the roof, GTX Neutron 240, AX1500i. Yes, the power supply is completely overrated, but please remember this is my test system. It's a rig specifically built for reviews. So the reason why the power supply is so enormous is so that if I'm running three or even four cards at times, or two jewels as it has been, so I've had two 295X2s in here, I don't have to keep swapping the power supply in and out. So the power supply is just part of the test rig, not for the graphics card itself. Um, uh, and yeah, Asus Rampage 4 Black Edition. I don't know if that might be getting swapped out soon though. Okay then, as we always do for our temperature tests, we're gonna run uh, Valley for about half an hour, probably just over. Uh, we run it at um, eight times AA, and then we've got the resolution at 2560 by 1440. And then on uh, GPU Z, we've got everything uh, set up. So the core clock, memory clock, temperatures, fan speed percentage, and the VRM temperatures, because this card has got probes on those. Some of them don't. But anyway, this card has got those temperatures, so it will, it will log the maximum temperatures and fan speed percentage that we get while Valley is just looping and we always use valley and you'd be amazed it's one of the um a really really good way of just stressing the graphics card out and it's what we do in every review so i'm going to leave this now and then i will just cut back in just before we finish the test so you can see us go back to the uh, main screen right then my lovelies we have been running for quite some time I ended up messing around with my home server, completely forgot this was running in the background. So what we're going to do is, right, we've had a maximum GPU temperature of 77 degrees, but just to be totally clear, we do have quite a warm room. And uh, when I tested this for the actual main review, I had the uh, air conditioning on. But before you start jumping around about air conditioning, all I do is use it to keep a static room temperature. I don't use it to make everything really, really cold. Uh, and on my, uh, uh, when I did that before, uh, the inside temperature would have been about 20.4 degrees. So we've basically, we've got an extra five degrees because of a much higher ambient temperature. Um, then we can see here, fan speed has gone up to 79%. But I know what you're thinking straight away. 79% fan speed actually sounds like an awful lot of... Um, uh, you're just going to assume it's going to be really loud, aren't you? What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up and I'm going to show you the difference between like an idle of like 25, 30% fan and then a 70% fan because it's actually quite crazy. That there isn't, it's, it's not as loud as you would think. Okay then peeps, so I have my um, uh, microphone off, it's actually, in fact I'll show you just quickly. Microphone is here, but I'm going to be basically stopping the CPU fans just quickly to show you what we're, the temps. Right, so here is your 20% idle um, audio. That's GPU at 
that's your GPU at 70%. Now with that back on auto, I have no idea how that's going to sound on camera until I uh, actually obviously get the footage onto the PC to be able to render. What I can say is that the amount of noise that was making then was probably roughly about what one of the standard 290s would have done at Nyon Auto. It's actually insanely quiet. Once you've got uh, it in with the rest of your system and stuff like that, you can't hear the graphics card at all. Um, I'm just, I don't want you to think I'm trying to highlight a bad issue here. I'm purposely showing you these different fan speeds and stuff to try and highlight something that actually made my jaw drop how quiet this bloody thing was. It's not very often I bother putting my microphone right next door to a fan to try and show you how quiet something is. Um, and it obviously, what, another thing you need to consider as well is it's really not that cool in the room at the moment either. We're, on, uh, we're at 26 degrees in the room now because obviously everything does warm up. It's still a very warm graphics card. So for those kind of noise levels, uh, for those kind of temperature levels for an AMD card, this is actually nuts. Okay then, Pete. So we're going to run a couple of benchmarks. We've got the FPS up in this top corner so you can see it as we go through, but at the same time, uh, you'll be able to get the results at the end of the video as well. And then I'll splash you up a quick screen as well of the results of the card with the other graphics cards that we've got. I'll compare all the results and we kind of talk in the conclusion at the end though. Uh, just so you know, the game is maxed out at 2560 by 1440. Uh, I didn't bother, I haven't bothered doing any 4K results because obviously with a lot of games you need to uh, turn all the AA off and stuff to be able to get the best of them. And uh, we generally, with all of our results, play with the games maxed out just because it's easier to be able to tell you all the settings. It's easier to say maxed out rather than going through every different little option. And it's also something that's pretty easy for you guys to replicate at home as well. I mean, see in the top right hand corner, it was uh, above 40 pretty much continuously then with a 2560 by 1440 res. Um, minimum frame second 39.6, maximum frame second was 66 dead. Average was around 50, which is obviously a very strong uh, frames per second. Don't forget though, at that, if you were running VSync, uh, your VSync would have been running at 30 frames per second, not 60, because if you have a look, the average was 50. So most of the time, your VSync would have been at 30 FPS. And now you know why generally we don't run it. We can't run it with the uh, benchmarks anyway, but I certainly don't run it in games. I don't know many people that bother with it either. So another one quickly, Hitman Absolution, same situation again. 1920, 1920, what am I on about? 2560 by 1440, with everything completely turned up to the hilt. This one's got a lot of shadows, a lot of colours, a lot of depth in this one. It's actually quite a, one of the nicer ones to watch. Uh, it's also, especially at this resolution, it does give the graphics cards a paste in. You can see that this at the moment is uh, about 33 frames per second. So it does really give them a battering, which is one of the you know, reasons that we use it. It's also an AMD game, so AMD can't moan that we're putting it up against stuff with gallons and gallons of physics results to get better results from and stuff. But anyway... Oh, we're down to 30. There was a little flicker to 29 then. So, as we can see, there was a little flicker to 29. Minimum is 29.1, maximum was 42.7, the average was 35.1. So, quite a stressful test for this card there. Uh, I will flick the results up for you for the graph now, I suppose. Don't forget to press pause. OK, 
Congratulations, peeps, if you made it to the conclusion without skipping. I very much doubt there are many of you that did that, but if you did, pause the video, go and get yourself a cookie. Just make sure you come back. Anyway, uh, the XFX 290 double dissipation. Uh, conclusion, get comfortable. Uh, yes, we, uh, we haven't done an XFX card in quite some time. Um, some of the original DD cards, and I think I'm going back to 7970 DD cards. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's that far back. It might be a little bit further back from that still, but the original direct dissipation stuff, we personally at OC3D weren't a particular fan of it. Um, and the reason for that being, it was noisier than the stock card and it was warmer. It just looked better and that was way, way back. I can happily report things have changed quite a lot to the point where today, I'm, or at least when I first tested this, I was absolutely gobsmacked. I actually rang around a load of people that I know that are into computers because I couldn't quite believe what I was uh, seeing, hearing, all of that kind of stuff, really. I was properly, properly shocked. Uh, and essentially, it's f the, the cooler on this is fucking awesome. There's no polite way for me to put it. It's as far as I'm concerned, when you consider the entire package, and by the entire package I mean the way it looks, the way it sounds, and the thermals, it's the best one I've had on any of the A&D cards. The MSI was, um, the, it was very quiet, but the temps were still up on the A&D thing. Let's not forget, these cards just sit at 95 degrees if they want to, and that's the way that they're kind of meant to be. Now the MSI was really quiet, but it sat at the thermal 95 degrees and the fans kind of spun up a little bit to get it there, but it did stay quiet. You had other ones, I'm pretty sure we did the Gigabyte one, which was a lot cooler, but it wasn't particularly quiet at all. This is cool, quiet, and still looks the bomb as well. It's actually like, um, the cooler design on this, I have to admit, as far as the cooler design, uh, I've not said we're gonna give it a gold award, or did, a, did I, I can't remember, anyway. Um, Gold Ward, yes, that. Uh, the cooler design on this, if it had had a back plate on the card and the inside bits of the card, you can see the copper heat pipes. Now, yeah, okay, it's a bit of a nitpicky thing, but if the internal heat sink had been uh, like nickel plated or something to get rid of the look of that copper, then I would have given it the first uh, TTL White Gold Award. Now, the TTL White Gold Award literally goes above and beyond. It's like They've, it's fucking amazing, and it, th that's how much I like this card. If it had a back plate, and I couldn't have seen those bloody bits of copper, and it had been nickel plated, it would have got the um, white gold award. The, the embellishment, the XFX embellishment that lights up, just gives it that air of something special. It does. Uh, and I know the lights in my case up here grab hold of that XFX glossy bit on the heatsink just nice, but it's little things like the the chromey parts and the way that the heat sink has got those nice little bits around it. You can see that there's actually been an air of design that's gone into this, the little chrome bits around the outside of the fans. But it's not all design and no substance because 77 degrees for this had been running for about uh, an hour and a 15 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, way over the kind of tests that we normally do. So everything inside of that case would have been up to like it was being absolutely hammered because the graphics card just sits at 100%. It's not like playing Battlefield where it's cooling down, warming up, cooling down, warming up. The, the, the Unigen is actually quite a harsh test on the graphics cards, which is why we use it for thermals. Turning all those settings up uh, and having it on 2560 by 1440, the difference between turning the settings down a little bit can be like 10, 15 degrees. So it's a proper ball grabbing like smack in the face of a benchmark so the fact that the, this actually got abused means it got pushed harder than any of the other graphics cards and we got tested video wise as well so it's done amazingly uh, also you a lot of people kind of like will, will chirp up and go oh you didn't overclock it you didn't do this you didn't do that with the AMD cards I can every single one that I've got will get up to about 1150 megahertz this one's got lots of over, lots of voltage options and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, the way I would kind of run them, because they're so hot at stock anyway, is if you can nestle them up to about um, a thousand megahertz, just kind of leave them there. If you really want to push them, you've either got to be deaf, not particularly worried about it, 
or be on water cooling. And I kind of think that once you kind of push them that little bit too far and they are running on the ragged edge and the fans have to spin up more, you kind of ruin the whole PC experience unless you're just constantly battering yourself with guns and stuff when you're uh, playing your FPS or something. Um, but for the, you know, kind of the overall type of thing, this wasn't the quickest 290 that we've looked at, but it was way up there in the grass, and it was only the stock clock, as I've already said, it was only like 950 megahertz. So it's actually a really strong card straight out the box. The thermals are great. It doesn't make a lot of noise, not like some of them. I mean, the rest of this rig is completely drowning out the graphics card. Um, and uh, it absolutely looks the dog danglies as well. It's without a shadow of a doubt the prettiest graphics card uh, of the, the 200 um, AMD range I've seen. That's every single card that I've looked at, whether you're talking about the MSI gaming ones, whether you're talking about the Asus ones that I've seen. I regard this visually prettier than the Asus Matrix card. Now, the mate your Asus is now going to be having a fit, chucking his coffee across the room and phoning me up, telling me I shouldn't have said that. But this is actually a properly, properly pretty card. Um, so yes, I've put the cat amongst the pigeons. Definitely the prettiest looking uh, AMD card I've seen. Just helps really when it's actually the, it doesn't get very hot, it doesn't make a lot of noise, and it still kicks out some awesome numbers at the same time. So there you have it. That's why we gave it the OC3D award. And I'm fucking bloody glad that I asked if I could have a review of one of these now. So without shadow, without uh, more, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I've had far too much coffee today. I need to get on. I need to get this on the PC so I can render it so you lot can see it. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the gold award winning XFX 290 double dissipation graphics card. Out. Oh look, it can munch the hunk, 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 hunk. Yes, I'm nuts. <laughs>